good morning everyone welcome back to the build this is a special edition saturday edition of the build i guess it's just uh just donovan and myself here today kind of wrapping up whatever we can doing a little half day short day kind of thing because uh it's kind of it's yeah i was gonna say it's nice today but it's not it's uh let's see it's oh it's warmed up it's it's 36 degrees today currently and it's not looking like it's gonna warm up much past that and it's nice and damp so it's cold and damp but at least the sun is trying to the sun's trying to peek out through the clouds so we'll, we'll see hopefully that kind of helps us feel a little warmer so we're gonna uh, get up here and start working on the soffit get that knocked out and finished up and then uh see if we can get some trim uh some trim details kind of sorted out as well this is gonna be a little bit quicker episode as far as work goes so i uh, i plan to hopefully answer some uh some questions today that uh, i have been seeing quite a bit so soffit time purlins and soffit it's the, the thing that just keeps on going the most monotonous thing ever purlins soffit let's go I think I showed this when I was up here with Jack, but on these transitions here, look at this cool move. Put a little bend in there, and you get a continuous soffit thing. In case you're wondering how the uh, <laughs> the two roof sections are tied together with the soffit. That one good? Yeah, I came a little bit off of it. I'm, I'm acceptable with that. Acceptable. <laughs> looks good for my house. Yeah, uh huh. Your house? My house, it looks fabulous. <laughs> it looks better for my lazy wife. <laughs> A lot of things do. I do. <laughs> Another thing I can show on here is this detail here. I had a few questions of how this all kind of this build up works. So lower roof comes up into here. This is that, uh, is there an official name for this cap? I don't remember. Transition cap, I'll call it a transition cap. Yes. Something like that. And then the upper roof sits on top of that. And you can see our outside closure foam on this side, and then inside closure foam on that side. So that's how that detail kind of comes together. You good? Yep.
I'm bent over. <laughs> I'm falling. I'm falling. Oh, nope, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> nope, nope, I'm falling. <laughs> I'd like to see how the outside corners because I kind of, I kind of think I, I know how I'm doing this, but I'm not. Well, that one then. So let's get back to that outside corner. Outside corner. Here we come. Today's bird sighting is. Hope they're moving too fast for me. Hello, birdie. Are you looking at birds again? Yeah, I don't know what this is, but it's a bird. It's flying. Where is it? I don't even see it. It's like in the sun. I can't see the camera sees it. I don't. The people see it. Oh, well, then it's real. It's, it's a real bird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what kind of bird that is. It's kind of big. I don't know where it's going. It's going all over the place. All right. There's your bird sighting. So these are the corner cap trim piece thingies. There's the, the shape for you. Well, cap all the corners on the building and I guess the corners or ends of the roof all the way around. These could look nice with the, the white trim, red barn and what was it like a charcoal gray? Something like that? Slate gray? I don't know. Some kind of bluish gray roof thing. Yeah, there's one corner. Just having that white line really adds quite a bit, surprisingly. All right, it's lunchtime. We were gonna keep working and kind of work through lunch for a bit and then be done around two, but we're hungry, we're tired. We're gonna call it a day here. We got this uh, corner piece in, and the biggest thing is Davin wanted to see how this is gonna work out with the detail here in the corner as it goes up into the soffit. So now that's kind of figured out, the other ones will just kind of follow suit. So that's going to be kind of it for us for the day-to-day -day daily work. Uh, at this point, we have the concrete pour on Monday, and then it'll be subs and everything for you know the next month or so to get it insulated, put the boiler in, and hopefully get the electrical panel kind of prepped as well. We'll be back out here probably in, a, in two weeks. Uh, when Jack has some time again, we'll get that ridge cap installed. We'll kind of work through the trim details, but the biggest thing for me in this building is just kind of just getting it basically dried in and getting it here so that it can be used uh, for storage. All my stuff in my warehouse is kind of in storage mode now, so if I can move to a different storage place, I don't have to pay for the storage there. I'm not so much worried about can I use the space immediately because I'm not using that space either. I like to use the space as soon as possible because then I can start, you know, making back the money I've invested in this building, but I'm taking what I can get. So the biggest determining factor as far as time frame goes is going to be this door. That's not coming in until the beginning of December. So that's, that's kind of the, the biggest thing right now. I am waiting to hear back on when the power company can bring their power line in and a natural gas line in and all of that 
If that doesn't happen fast enough, I do have a few contingency options that I can do, but uh, you know, we're just, this, this door. So I'm not really expecting this to be a functional space until uh, probably mid-December, you know, based on us installing this door. So I am kind of excited because this is sort of like the end of the, uh, the constant day after day after day of getting this barn up and kind of to this point. This is the amount of the project that uh, that Donovan and myself wanted to take on and then the rest kind of, well, almost all the rest is gonna be subbed out. So at least we can get back to uh, our normal lives. Donovan's got his other job. He's been uh, away from for a month now that he needs to get back and work on. I got other things to work on too. So it'll be nice to be done with this or at least to have this like as a back burner, pick away at it as we have time and as things come in uh, to get done on it. So since this is kind of a quickie episode, I'm going to run through a few common questions that uh, I've been getting and uh, hopefully give some context and some answers to some stuff. We'll see. We'll see. No promises. So first I want to just touch on the floor. Uh, why we didn't pour the floor in the beginning with the foundations and all of that. And the, the, the short and quick answer is uh, this method worked out better for our schedules. Um, we have, of course, well, like three, three different groups of people that have to be aligned to put the floor in. You have the concrete guys, then the plumbers, oh, actually, no, the concrete guys, and then us, and then the plumbers, and then the concrete guys. So I guess four different people orders, uh, and getting all those people aligned and on the schedule and all that wasn't really possible to get it done early enough that we could start putting the building up um, before the weather just you know, got like this. So if we had put the floor in first, we wouldn't have started building the building until the first week of October, which would have been last week. And uh, it would be all downhill from there. <laughs> so, and, and our, our trades people weren't all that available then either, so that didn't really work. This, this works just fine. It's not a huge deal. The only big difference is you have the uh, post kind of to deal with. On the inside, it's not gonna matter because the floor is actually gonna come up on top of them. It's on the outside, depending on your, your grading and your details out there, that might be a little bit, uh, a little bit iffy. I think having the, a single monolithic pour would be a better way if you can pull it off time frame wise, but uh, that wasn't really possible for us here. The downside of doing the slab first is the possibility of damaging that slab as you're working. For me, that wasn't something that I'm particularly concerned with because uh, I'm gonna be a lot more uh, aggressive, <laughs> let's say, with this floor after it's installed because its use is more of a warehouse type floor. It's gonna have machinery driving over it all the time. Uh, so it's gonna experience the same life in its future as it would during construction. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a concern for me. Uh, if, it's, if you're doing a lighter weight slab floor, that might be a concern. But for me, that wasn't a huge, a huge deal. But something to keep in mind if you're looking at doing a, uh, a building like this and you're considering options for your floor. Next one is uh, the price point on something like this. How much is it gonna cost and, uh, and whatnot. So I will provide a more uh, detailed uh, breakdown of the costs at the end once everything is done. Uh, sort of the ballpark of where things are gonna end up. Let's, let's say like in December when that garage door is in and it's insulated and the boiler's in and everything, I should be at about 175,000. I figure total project costs once we add the porch on here and all of that be around 200,000. So that's kind of a, a ballpark on that. Okay, last question for today. A lot of people have been really into and asking about the cameras I'm using for all of the shoots. And I think a lot of people were surprised that uh, all the footage is captured by me and all the edits are mine as well. So the full, everything you're watching is something that uh, I produced. And just as a side, this project with filming it and making these videos has been just a really fun uh, experience for me. I kind of got out of like the the funk I was in with making videos and everything, this has just been like a really fun refresher of getting the, the passion back of actually of a filmmaking or, you know, trying to have some fun with the cinematography of making something that's 
kind of mundane into something that's fun and, and watchable. So this is kind of what I assembled uh, as I was working and as I was kind of trying to figure this out. I have other cameras and things, but this is what I've been using for the barn build, you know, so far. First thing here is a Sony Z150. This is one of my go-to cameras around the shop or around the sawmill or whatever, but for this build, it's been a stationary camera on the ground. It allows me to pick up a lot of what's going on at ground level with the shotgun mic and the dead cat on here. You get you know, no uh, wind noise or anything like that. So if I want a really crisp, clear uh, sound to use in the edit, I have this to use if I don't want any, uh, any speaking or something where I'm like, we're up on a lift or something like that. So that's kind of like the, the main base camera. This one stays on the ground on a tripod and rolls pretty much the entire day. The next thing on the list is going to be the DJI Pocket 2. So this is a gimbal based handheld camera. I'll use that anytime I am just kind of walking around, talking to camera, pointing at things and whatnot. Having a mechanical stabilizer like this makes the footage extremely smooth. And it also kind of, it'll slow down any kind of jerks you might have. So any, Anything you're doing if I'm walking around and pointing at stuff, this is gonna be the camera I'm gonna use for that. It also has some ability to do like object tracking. So back when we did like the, the walls, I set this thing on a tripod and I used Donovan as the target and the head would just, would just follow him as he was uh, working around and nailing and stuff. So that was kind of fun. But mostly it's any sort of intro, outro, walk and talk, point at stuff. This is the, uh, the camera for that. Next one here is the DJI Action 2. It's a sort of a modular camera, so it's got a base unit as well as like the main body camera. So you can just use it like this and be able to see what you're doing. Or what I use it more is just the camera by itself, just like this. And I bought this specifically for one use case, and that is for the POV headband thing. So I can actually wear that on my head. And it's really lightweight and very easy to wear. And I have my hands free to do whatever I'm doing uh, on the building. So that's, uh, that's this one. Now for additional pickup shots, I have an action camera. So I have the GoPro, this is the Hero 9. Uh, I got this about a year ago. I don't really like it that much. I use it for like some pickup shots on the lift and things, but I really wanted to have that extra action cam to position wherever I needed it. Uh, so I ended up buying the the DJI Action 3. I like this camera a lot more than the GoPros. This is far more intuitive to use, and I think the image quality is a lot better. The other thing that's really nice about this is it has magnetic mounts, so you can clip it to whatever mount you want to use it on, just like the other one. This is the Action 2. And you can clip this thing onto the mounts as well. And this thing is magnetic as well, so if I wanted to put this onto you know, the roof or something, I could just stick it down, which is super nice. But uh, yeah, this is a uh, little extra pickup shots here and there as, uh, as needed. And then maybe everyone's favorite is the drone. This is the Mini 3 Pro from DJI. I feel like this is a DJI thing. <laughs> Somehow they make really good stuff and it's worked out really well for me. So I previously had the Mini, the original one, and the Mini 3 brought in a lot of uh, features that I really wanted in a drone. The biggest one being some of the autopilot features. So this does have object tracking. So now I can have it track things. You know, in this case, it's not like I'm out riding my snowmobile and I want this to follow me. Um, this has the ability to also circle around an object. So you'll see that used quite a bit. So that'll add a little bit of motion into the shots as this thing is kind of circling around me or whatever I tell it to circle around. With this drone, I also went with the dedicated controller. On my previous drone, it had the one where you put your phone in it, which I absolutely hated for my purposes because then I can't use my phone when the drone is in the air. So that was super obnoxious. This is uh, here's my tether, so I can tether off to a purlin when I'm not using it and dangle it you know, from the air when it's not being used. So those are all up there with me <laughs> while I was working the whole time. And then sort of lastly is gonna be my phone. I have this in my pocket like all the time. So if I don't have a camera near me and something interesting is happening, I can use this for quick pickup shots of whatever happens to be happening that I might need footage of. So that's the, uh, the general array of cameras. So like for each video, I usually have at least three camera sources. So I'm pulling footage from three different cameras into the edits, which is uh, 
Always an interesting process, getting everything synced up and uh, aligned and everything, but I think that makes for a much more interesting video, having the footage and having the shots of whatever the heck is going on from almost always multiple angles. Uh, picking up my wheelbarrow of cameras. <laughs> so that is gonna do it for us, and it's gonna do it for a lot of the, uh, the videos going forward, I guess. There'll be less of them. We have the floor pour, which will be the video after this. And then I will probably do a little coverage on the move. Uh, I plan to move out of the warehouse space basically as soon as I can kind of lightly drive on the slab. So that should be by the end of the month. If I get out by the end of the month, I don't have to pay for November or have to worry about prorating it or anything like that. And I just, I just want to be done. So I really just want to be, don't have to worry about it anymore. So the last week of October, I think will be just moving in and getting things at least in here and uh, into storage in here versus in Minneapolis. So that's, uh, that's gonna do it for today and for a lot of the build, finally. <laughs> Super excited about that. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the barn thing, barn warehouse, chair house, whatever you wanna call it, Please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy Water King.